25 year old Max Greenfield is without his medication, which is why his family is extremely worried for his safety. Max Greenfield is missing. Last seen at the Lucky Seven Casino in Smith River, California. There are many questions with very few answers in this story. I'm Anne, the host of Unexplained Realms, the podcast. Please join me and my producer, Mr. Eddie V. Buenas. For this unexplained missing persons case. According to NamUs, the National Missing and Unidentified Person System, over 600,000 individuals go missing a year. And over 4,400 unidentified bodies are found. The majority of the missing persons cases go unsolved. Max Greenfield has been missing for over two years now, with no leads and no new information. Authorities believe there are multiple people involved and withholding information. 25-year-old Max Greenfield grew up in the small town of Brookings, nestled on the border of Oregon, six miles outside of California. He loved his mom and his sister and was described by many as soft-spoken, kind, and creative. He dreamed of being an artist, attending multiple colleges in the Southern California area. He finally moved to New York, though after only a short time, he came back to Oregon and studied graphic design in Portland. Max struggled with substance abuse and self-medicated as he suffered from mental health issues. In 2013, he was admitted into a mental health facility and later a detox center in 2017. Friday, March 16th, his sister Tanya asked him to go to the movies in Crescent City, California. He informed her that he was at the Lucky Seven Casino in Smith River, California, and they could meet up there. The Lucky Seven Casino was a place that Max frequently visited, as Brookings had very little to no entertainment for its residents. Most escaped to surrounding towns for movies, shows, and entertainment. Tanya arrived at the Lucky Seven Casino at 6 p.m. and located Max but he told her he just wasn't interested in seeing a movie. He offered to have a beer with her instead. She agreed, and after finishing their beers, he asked her to take him home. He would be home no later than 10.30 p.m. that Friday night. Max made plans with his sister to see a movie on Sunday, March 18th. Saturday, March 17th, Max's mother, Andrea, got up and went to work. 
There's no information as to whether Max stayed in all day or not. After his mother came home from work that evening, she placed his medications out in preparation for Max to take them the next morning. Shortly after that, she said goodnight to Max and went to bed around 9 or 10 p.m. Sunday, March 18th, Max's mother woke up to see that Max had not taken his medication yet. She assumed he was still sleeping as she was heading to work at 6 a.m. Though, this was not the case as Max was not in the home at this time. Saturday night, March 17th, sometime after his mother said goodnight to him, Max began sending messages via the Facebook Messenger, asking for a ride to the Lucky Sevens Casino. Around 11.40 p.m., a friend offered him a ride, and during that ride, he messaged another friend, asking her if she would be at the casino when he arrived. After being in the casino for some time, employees asked Max for his ID. He was unable to provide it and was asked to leave the casino. With very little money, no ID, and no car, he simply just hung around outside. Around 1.50 a.m., cameras record Max talking to a man in a leather jacket outside the casino. This man appeared to be holding a drink and listening to Max talk while taking sips of his drink. The man is Jason Ledford. There is little to no information about him as authorities hold tight some of the pieces to this case. Max was seen carrying a black duffel bag which contained a bottle of Orange Crush. He had his cell phone in his other hand. Cameras record Jason walking away from the camera, and Max followed. Another camera picked them both up walking towards Highway 101 and leaving the casino property. Roughly 20 minutes later, Jason Ledford came back into the view of the cameras, but Max was not with him. This camera footage is the last Max was ever seen. The next day, Sunday, March 18th, Max's sister, Tanya, began to send him texts regarding their plans to go to the movies that day. He did not respond. It didn't really raise an alarm. He was kind of known to do this at times. When Max's mom came home, she began to worry a little as his medication still hadn't been taken that morning. Assuming he went out that night before and hadn't come home yet, she reached out to Tanya to ask if she knew where he was. Neither were too concerned as this was semi-normal for Max. Though, by the next day, he still hadn't come home. His sister Tanya creates a Facebook post regarding the whereabouts of her brother. 
The female friend Max had messaged on Facebook asking if she would be at the casino. She responded. She said she was there, but Max never arrived. On March 20th, the family contacted authorities to report Max missing, though authorities did very little with this case at first because Max was a known substance abuser and would often wander off. It wasn't until his sister Tanya found Facebook messages to show the police that he was making plans with others at the casino, but was never heard from. Authorities in Brookings, Oregon, began working with Del Norte County Sheriffs in California as the disappearance occurred in California. Once the camera footage was reviewed, the Sheriff's Department stated it did not appear that he ran away. When Tanya, Max's sister, saw the camera footage, she knew exactly who the man was in the footage. She knew his name was Jason Ledford, and she immediately reached out to him on Facebook. Jason Ledford told Tanya he had not seen Max that night, nor did he even really know who Max was. Police went on to question Jason Ledford, and he repeatedly stated that he did not know who Max was. Though the second time he was questioned, he stated he somewhat knew who Max was, but didn't know anything about that night. Of course, authorities show Ledford the footage of him and Max, and of course his story changes once again. Ledford now claims that Max wanted to walk, but in a different direction than him, and he's unaware of where Max went after they parted ways. On further review of the camera footage, Ledford is seen going back into the casino after Max and him part ways. He's filmed standing in a hallway and appearing to be panicking, pacing back and forth, grabbing his head, Ledford continues to change his story, stating he really doesn't know Max well, or another story he tells, he's afraid for his life if he talks too much. Many speculate that the duffel bag he was carrying was packed as a runaway bag and that he was planning to leave his life. Though his sister disagrees, she states his bag had art supplies in it and the girl he was planning to meet was someone he often painted with. A young woman by the name of Chrissy Travis was questioned. And after her questioning, it appeared that Jason Ledford was lying once more. Chrissy told police that Max and Jason were supposed to meet up with her at the casino that night and head back to her house that evening. Jason was to provide drugs for the evening, including heroin. Max was surrounded by many hardened criminals in his circle. Authorities have stated they have an idea that this case is directly related to drug use and activity, but have no solid leads. As this investigation has gone on, Jason Ledford now claims he was close to Max, but he would never harm him. Max Greenfield is a white adult male. He is about six feet tall, 150 to 160 pounds, dark brown hair, green eyes, 
and a skeleton key tattooed on his left forearm. He was last seen wearing black jeans, a dark t-shirt, and a black jacket. He also had a dark knit stocking cap and a black duffel bag. If you have any information regarding Max Greenfield, please contact Detective Jaron Gill at area code 707-465-2468 or contact the Del Norte County Sheriff's Office. Thank you for listening to Unexplained Realms, the podcast. You can find more about us at unexplainedrealms.com or find us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Support for this podcast comes from Anchor.fm and V Media Studios.